emoji is now the fastest growing language in the UK. But our truth, but what other truths can symbols convey when we can't use words? Nearly six years ago, I contracted chronic fatigue syndrome, triggered by a serious ear infection. Although that infection was treated, and I can hear again, my autoimmune system still acts like it's constantly fighting an infection or virus. Unlike many other diseases, medical science does not know the causes, how to treat it, or have a cure. This terrible disease is a complex array of debilitating and fluctuating conditions. Although there are some common symptoms, such as extreme physical and mental fatigue, poor memory recall, restricted mobility, irritable bowel syndrome, and flu-like symptoms, everyone is affected differently. Many sufferers housebound or confined to bed. Earlier this year, I slept for 18 hours a day for six weeks. When awake, I had no energy and no volition. Time lost its meaning. My mobility was severely restricted because of the pain that walking and standing causes. I couldn't hold my thoughts or complete simple sentences. I became hypersensitive to the environment, becoming easily stressed by people and the noise around me. Living with chronic fatigue syndrome means the simplest tasks are difficult to execute, exhausting, and will take days for me to recover. This drastic life-changing disease affects an estimated 250,000 people in the UK, 20 million worldwide. Suffering can last for years or a lifetime. Yet, the UK standard battery medical test results indicate that you're perfectly healthy. The hardest aspect of long-term illness is the loss of quality of life. Neuroscience tells us that thinking originates from the negative and positively charged receptors and transmitters in the brain the activity of which creates an electrochemical, electromagnetic field. But thinking is a thin king when isolated from the emotions and your physical environment. Interpersonal neurobiology tells us that each of us human beings are a mass 
of billions of interacting cells that together create a living ecosystem we call the mind. So when we actually meet each other, we are literally stepping into each other's minds. This field is the source of social well-being. Well-being, then, is a positive ex energy exchange which requires being acknowledged, understood, and appreciated for our similarities and differences. When we feel healthy, we tend to become busy, focused on completing tasks throughout the day, Making meaningful connections with people becomes less important to us and puts that social question that we all ask into question. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Faking interest in each other is not meaningful or sustainable in creating a living ecosystem that is well-being. Out of unconscious habit, we effectively hide how we really are and fail to pay attention to how others actually are. Living with chronic fatigue syndrome made me realize that when we meet another, we need to make active and honest connections to co-create well-being. Missing out this simple step for expediency's sake leaves us unconnected and isolated. Social death, as it's called in psychology, is a lack of human connection, which renders us outsiders disowned from our communities, starved of being acknowledged, understood, and appreciated. Social death is unacceptable. After living with chronic fatigue for four years, isolated and with no way to really help myself, I had a lucid dream. A dream that inspired me to dare to disrupt the unconscious ways that we relate to each other. Science does not understand why humans dream or why lucid dreams are so real. Psychoanalysis suggests that our, world, our dream worlds are symbolic signs that offer us insight into our unconscious. My lucid dream made my ill self gave... I'm just going to do that again. It's a good example, isn't it, to give you of how it, my brain works. Okay, here we go. <laughs> During my lucid dream, my ill self gave my well self an idea. 
an idea that could help everyone to better connect and increase individual and collective well-being, even if we're ill. The idea was a badge, a badge that displays numbers. I've called it the Wellbeing Indicator Badge, the WIB. <laughs> Wearing this badge does two things to remind us to connect with others. Firstly, it connects you to your energy. Secondly, it allows others to connect with you in relation to their energy. Human connection is essential in life. How we communicate with each other really matters. And as anyone who is needlessly suffering, social rejection will tell you. Being acknowledged, understood, and appreciated is what they miss the most. Like the emoji language, it's simpler to talk in numbers than words. Here's how it works. You put the badge on your body. You select and display the number that reflects your energy level on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being the highest energy level and 1 being the lowest. In psychology, this awareness activity, the adjusting of the badge as you fluctuate as you're with your energy, is called self-regulation. The badge is an, ex an effective reality checking tool that gets you engaged with the internal and external influences that currently impair your personal and our collective well-being. So when you see someone's number or you're adjusting your own, you're entering into symbolic interaction. Like lucid dreaming, you will know in an instant how they are and how best to connect with them. Talking in numbers provides a useful shortcut to openness, honesty, and integrity, which, for me, is what well-being really is. Right now, I'm a four. I might well look fine to you, but being a four means my energy is diminishing and pain is increasing. Mentally, I'm struggling to keep focus and stay on task. You might have noticed. I'm aware talking is exhausting me. Emotionally, I'm drained, which, left unchecked, will quickly express itself as impatience or irritability leading, potentially, to anger. Physically, I'm aware that I can't stand for much longer without intense pain in my feet, knees, and hips. And I'll have even heavier lead weights for my arms. Four is a sign the badge wearer's energy is draining. It's an early warning sign, a call 
to action. This is where your response comes in, in co-creating well-being. When you see the badge wearer is a four, you'll know to acknowledge, understand, and appreciate their status. You'll be accessing your compassion. Critically, thank you. Critically, any more? No. <laughs> Critically, the web, the wib wearer. I'll start again. Again. Critically, for the wib wearer, talking in numbers enables positive connection, without repeatedly having to explain your status. Significantly, it causes others to act intuitively without instruction. When my 12-year-old son saw me and saw I was a four, he responded with this. Come and sit with me, Dad. I'm reading this brilliant book. I'll read it out aloud to you. My 10-year-old daughter said, Dad, I'll make you a cup of tea. Human connection is well-being in action. When my wife sees my four, she instinctively knows to prepare for the direction of my energy. Will I become a three or a five? Human connection is well-being in action. When my doctor sees my four, he sees the quality of life that I've brought with me into the consulting room. I'm no longer just another ill patient. He's instantly connecting to me from my perspective. The five-minute consultation feels like 20 minutes of quality acknowledgement, understanding, and appreciation. For both of us, human being is well-being in action. Now, when people ask me, how are you? I point to my badge. I'm a four, thank you. How are you? Please don't wait to become critically ill before you start talking in numbers. The Wib Enhancers teachers and students can improve learning. The Wib Enhancers work colleagues to collaborate far more productively. The Wib enables families to mind read each other's true needs. And the WIB improves compassionate interaction between healthcare professionals and patients. It's simple yet profound. As an audience, you have been a 10 to me. You have enhanced my well-being. And I'm very grateful. Thank you very much.